Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at a brand new Docker dashboard called My Homepage. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24-7 customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60-day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So I should preface all of this with the, the, the name of the dashboard is currently called my homepage, but the developer who goes by the screen name or the handle A-J-N-A-R-T, I don't know how to pronounce that, I, I don't want to screw that up. So I'm just going to spell it there. And we're just going to run with that. So uh, so basically, uh, he, he's been working on this container for a little while. Uh, he reached out to me recently and asked me to take a look at it, let me know what I thought about it. And I like where he's headed with it. And that's why I want to show it to you, even though it's still, well, especially because it's still early development. Um, if you if you want to get in and help uh, with the development, of course, we're going to take a look at this just real quick. But uh, there is, if we come over here, there is a GitHub page. Uh, there is a hub.docker.com page. Uh, over here on the GitHub, there's obviously issues um, that, that he has that he has started, that I have started, um, and we've just kind of been having a conversation. I've also already started this on a different computer. I'm not logged in here, but uh, if you're if you're interested in this project, please get involved. Uh, come over here to to, to GitHub, start it, uh, contribute however you can. He's definitely looking for people to help with documentation and things like that. So uh, so definitely check this out if you're interested in what we're about to take a look at. Um, but I do want to let you know that yes, the developer did reach out to me, but uh, I have that happen periodically, and I don't always promote projects that are brought to me. Uh, this one I do like, though, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is is because it's really just this simple to deploy. It's a version three. Uh, I, I set it up as version three. Version two would probably be just fine. Uh, our service here is listed as MHP. Again, my homepage. Again, subject to change, but that's what it is currently. Uh, our image will be the AJNART slash MHP image. Um, there, there, we've got ports, just one set of ports currently on 7575 uh, for the Docker side, the external port, but 80 on the internal port. So you could change 7575 to whatever you need it to be. Uh, just don't touch the 80. Just wanna be clear on that, don't touch the 80. And then restart always. So if you reboot your system, whatever, it should automatically restart. Also, if we come over here to Portainer, uh, here we go. Here are our, our resource usage. Uh, we're using seven megabytes of RAM for this uh, for this dashboard. Um, and, and so basically, uh, it's it's very, very lightweight, it's very easy to use, um, and it's super easy to deploy. So let's actually take a quick look at my homepage. So if we come over to here, this is uh, currently what I have set up. Um, it is currently in dark mode right now. We've got a little icon right there. Uh, that is getting moved in a future release. I've already taken a look at that. Uh, and when it gets moved, uh, it'll be in this settings uh, icon right up here, kind of in this area right there. I do also like that you can switch your search engine from Google to DuckDuckGo to Bing. And then also, once you get this configured the way you like it, uh, you can actually download your configuration uh, just by clicking right there and clicking on download your config. And when you do that, you'll be presented with a JSON file. Here is my JSON file. It's very, very easy to read here. We've got services listed with their type, their name, their icon, and their URL. Um, and that's great for this particular service, which is the, the our peer-to-peer -peer service there. We've also got services like Sonar and Radar that have the same setup there, but also have an API key so that um, when let's say you're using Sonar and a new show pops up, you can come over here and see on the 18th, Halo season one, episode nine is in the works for that. Now, one thing I do wanna say here is that um, this is still early development. And right now, uh, for some reason, uh, like on, on Saturdays, I've got multiple things set up to, to hit my system. Unfortunately, right now, only one of those things uh, shows up. So, so there's still some work to be done there. Um, but that's just kind of one of those little things. Um, so if I click on this, there it is. It opens up in the new window, new tab, whatever. Uh, that's just by default. I love that it opens in a new tab. Uh, I complain about that a lot on other uh, on other things that I that I review and that I show with you guys that I really like things. Open in new tabs when appropriate. And this is definitely one of those cases. Um, this actually kind of reminds me a little bit of Organizer, if I'm being honest. 
um, without the without the iframing in, um, you know, over like we've got your list of app, apps over here on the left side and then everything iframes in. Some apps don't like to be iframed, so I actually prefer them to open in a new tab. So that, that's why I bring that up. So what you do is you click on add a service um, over here and you're just gonna get a screen that looks like that. And let's take a look at an example here. Uh, I've given it a name. I've, it automatically built in the icon here. Uh, currently he's using uh, Ice Whale Text repository of icons. Uh, after having spoken with the developer, he plans on switching that up, but that's just where it is for right now. Uh, we've got our service URL, basically where the, is this on your network? Uh, below that, we're gonna say, what, uh, what is this service that we're, that, we're, that we're installing or that we're putting here on our dashboard? It needs to know that for API reasons. Uh, so if I click out, I put in my API key there, click save service, and then it, I, I, again, still a, little, still a little work to be done, but right now it still does show uh, what's gonna be downloaded on any given day. Of course, I've got four services here and then a link uh, to a video, if I if I click here and click on edit, we can see that I gave the service a name, I gave it an icon URL, uh, and then a service URL. If you're curious about how I got that icon URL so that it's playing like this and playing like that, uh, it was actually super easy. Uh, all I did was I came to my homepage and I right clicked and I said, copy image address, like so, and that that's all it was. Uh, and then if I were to come into here, oops, click edit, there you go, same thing, that's how I did that. Uh, that's how I got that little animated thing going on there. On there, um, let's see, what else do we have? We've already kind of covered all of your thing. This is a very straightforward, minimalist setup here. Almost, almost, if I'm being honest, to a fault. And I, let me explain what I mean by that. So when I've got this page open, I'm just gonna copy that URL. I'm gonna open up uh, Firefox, I'm gonna paste that in there. This looks different. Why is that? Well, that's because um, the way this is set up is that there is there are no user accounts. There is no database. Uh, everything, all of your settings and everything gets stored in local storage on your browser as well as cookies. So, um, so when you switch from one browser to another, you've got a couple of options. The first option would be that you could, as I mentioned earlier, you just come up here, click on download your config, and then we open this back up. And then let me open this, go to my downloads where I downloaded my config. And if I just drag this up, bang, there we go. Now it looks just the same other than uh, I'm in uh, light mode versus dark mode, but again, super simple fix. So that's one, one way you could use this is just download your config from your, from your master browser and then just import it to whatever other browsers you may use throughout the day. Or you may use one browser for one dashboard and another browser for another dashboard. So you could have multiple dashboards set up on in, on different browsers if you wanted to go that route. So there's definitely some different ways that you could use this, um, the, 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 the way that this has been done with the local storage and cookies. So I just kind of wanted to show um, both sides of the coin there, so to speak. So, um, but yeah, that's really, that's it. That's my homepage. Again, name is subject to change, but that's, that's where it is right now. And I really wanted to uh, share this early so that people can get in and, and help uh, my last conversation with the developers, he's definitely looking for people, uh, not necessarily developers, uh, but people who might be interested in writing documentation or things like that to help build the progress, or to, to build the, the project up and, and get some more recognition, get more people using it, that sort of thing. So if you're interested in this, there will be links to all of this in the description down below. Uh, you can, of course, go over to the GitHub, over to the hub.docker.com, uh, you know, give it, give it stars and ratings and all that kind of stuff if you're interested. Um, and then, of course, like I said, feel free to contribute to the project in any way you see fit. But I think with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Oh, I lied. I'm not going to wrap this up. I want to give a big shout out to all of my channel members, my patrons, uh, the, the members of my new dbtech.fans website. Thank you guys for your support. Uh, also, the people who have just, you know, uh, sent me cash through Venmo or PayPal or whatever. Thank you guys. I really, really do appreciate your support. It really does mean quite a bit to me. So thank you guys for that. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, with that said, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.